Good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation this afternoon, COVID-19 vaccination hesitancy and vaccination barriers in indigenous communities. We can go to the next slide. We are the American Indian Public Health Resource Center, and we are um, presenting as a team today. My name is Vanessa Tibbetts. I am an enrolled member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, originally from South Dakota, and I serve as a program leader for the American Indian Public Health Resource Center. Oh, Gretchen, you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Gretchen Dobervich, and I am the policy project manager at the American Indian Public Health Resource Center. Good afternoon. My name is Ryan Eagle. I'm an enrolled member of the Mandan Hidatsa Rikara Nation from the Fort Berthold Reservation here in North Dakota, and I'm the research project manager at the American Indian Public Health Resource Center. Hi, everyone. My name is Diana Hawkins. I'm enrolled. Uh, at the Sistanoaptin Oyate, located in South Dakota, and I'm the Public Health Education Project Manager at the American Indian Public Health Resource Center. So, I really wanted to start off. Thank you for my amazing team for introducing themselves. I would like to start off this presentation with the North Dakota State University land acknowledgement. Our center is housed at North Dakota State University uh, in the Department of Public Health. So this land acknowledgement is a statement to show respect and recognition to the indigenous people of our community. It is a reminder for all of us, regardless of our identity, to understand our place within the history of this land. We collectively acknowledge that we gather at NDSU, a land grant institution on the traditional lands of the Ocheti Shakoin, the Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and Anishinaabe peoples, in addition to many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to these lands. We honor with gratitude Mother Earth and the indigenous peoples who have walked with her throughout generations. We will continue to learn how to live in unity with Mother Earth and build strong, mutually beneficial trusting relationships with indigenous people of our region. Next slide. Um, the land acknowledgement's just really important, I believe, um, just especially on today of all days to recognize um, the indigenous people who in originally inhabited our land. Um, so we are the American Indian Public Health Resource Center and we provide um, services to American Indians to address public health disparities through technical assistance, policy development, self-determination feasibility analysis, education research and programming in partnership with tribes, primarily in North Dakota, um, the Northern Plains region, and also nationally. And we do this through supporting public health services uh, public health education, public health policy, and research. Um, public health often overlaps with all of these services. So we work together at addressing all of these through a lens when we work with our tribal nations. We're gonna begin with an overview of COVID-19. So COVID-19 is a worldwide health threat which is vastly affecting the health, infrastructure, and capacity of Indigenous communities. In December 2019, the reporting of the first human cases of COVID-19 were in Wuhan City, China. On January 20th, 2020, the United States received its first confirmed case of COVID-19 in the state of Washington. Soon after, the abrupt surge in cases quickly escalated in many states across the United States. On March 11th, 2020, North Dakota had its first confirmed case of COVID-19. By early October 2021, the North Dakota Department of Health reported over 134,000 positive cases of COVID-19 and a total of over 1,654 deaths due to COVID-19. In the United States, there are over 43.8 million positive cases of COVID-19 and over 703,000 deaths due to COVID-19 by early October 2021. 
Although COVID-19 negatively impacts all populations within the United States, the American Indian population is among those who are being disproportionately impacted. The pandemic has hit Indigenous communities disproportionately hard, compounded by generations of historical trauma and mistrust. And the picture here is from um, Ogallala Sioux Tribe, and they had actual checkpoints um, coming in and off the reservation um, as COVID was surging in early 2020. According to an independent study by APM Research Lab published in March 2021, Indigenous Americans have the highest actual COVID-19 mortality rate nationwide accounting for 256 per 100,000 deaths in the United States. And this is a picture of Elvia Ramirez. She's from my tribal nation, the MHA nation. Um, and she was 17 years old when she died of COVID-19. And at the time she was the youngest COVID-19 death in North Dakota. COVID-19 in tribal communities. Indigenous communities across the United States face disproportionate rates of COVID-19 infection, hospitalization, and casualty. Indigenous susceptibility to the virus has roots in longstanding inequities caused by federal and state neglect and marginalization. Community factors such as lack of access to water and culturally responsive public health infrastructure both caused by longstanding underinvestment in tribal communities are also associated with COVID-19 spread across tribal communities. COVID-19 in tribal communities. Uh, COVID-19 vaccination in tribal communities in response to their disproportionately high burden of COVID-19 Indigenous nations across the country have mounted very effective vaccination campaigns since the initial vaccination rollout. Tribes have taken aggressive steps to vaccinate their populations, including having vaccination clinics available in multiple sites across the reservation communities and opening access to non-Native residents of Indigenous communities. Um, and I think an important part here to note is that tribes um, really view it as a community and so they they don't just focus on themselves but they wanted to vaccinate um, their entire community to protect everyone. COVID-19 vaccination in tribal communities. These tribal vaccination efforts had led to American Indians having higher vaccination rates than other racial and ethnic groups in the United States. And this graph shows the American Indian vaccination rates the American Indian uh, rates are this top line here in orange. And so both with receiving one dose and being fully vaccinated, their rates have been consistently higher throughout the duration um, of the pandemic since vaccines have been made available to them. Uh, although these tribal vaccination rates are good, there is still a large segment of the American Indian population that is not vaccinated and does not plan to get the vaccine. Tribal vaccination hesitancy has roots in the history of the profoundly negative experience Indigenous peoples have had with healthcare systems across the United States. COVID-19 vaccination rates among American Indians, roughly half, or 45% of the indigenous population in the United States has yet to be vaccinated. Um, and the current indigenous population in the United States is about 2.5 million enrolled members. Uh, so some reasons for COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy. Um, the first is so so socioeconomic factors. Transportation is a large barrier and among American Indian populations. And this ties in directly with the geographic location that many reservations have. They're very rural and they're very large. And sometimes the nearest clinic where someone can receive a vaccine um, can
can be over 100 miles away. There are also time constraints. Um, some people can't get time off of work. There's um, the time that it takes to drive far away and get vaccinated and then return. Um, some other factors are pre-existing health conditions um, like diabetes, heart disease, and obesity, which have some of the highest rates among American Indian populations. Um, this puts makes them nervous um, to receive a vaccine while they already have these other coexisting health conditions. And there's also government distrust. Um, they, they don't prefer large scale mass vaccinations um, and they would like their vaccines to be available at trusted facilities that are located within their tribal communities, such as tribal admin buildings um, or schools. Um, the government distrust comes from their relationship with the Indian Health Service typically. Um, and so there are 170 Indian Health Service units that serve 574 federally recognized tribes. And originally the Indian Health Service was established in the Department of War um, due to the conflicts that the federal government had with American Indian tribes. Um, now it is under the Department of Health and Human Services, but that government distrust is still a large factor today. Um, so the socioeconomic um, vaccine hesitancy among Indigenous peoples includes not having transportation and not having the time um, to leave work or to leave other um, duties that they may have and drive these long distances in rural communities, or they may not even have access to a vehicle. Some of the unvaccinated indigenous population believe that existing health conditions make them ineligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. During the height of the pandemic, some pre-existing health conditions prevalent in indigenous communities such as obesity and diabetes were cited as leading to more severe COVID-19 virus outcomes. So this leads to more work needs to be done to ensure people know that even with pre-existing conditions, the vaccine is safe. Some Indigenous people have also indicated their preference to be vaccinated in a more personal and intimate setting, such as at a trusted doctor's office or tribal facility on the res, rather than at the larger scale mass vaccination sites we've seen in larger cities and throughout the state. This is an this is this is an example of a tribal effort um, to encourage folks to wear masks if they aren't vaccinated yet or are too young to be vaccinated. And this warrior up and wear a mask campaign is um, being, de being deployed um, by the Pascal Yaki tribe in Southern Arizona. One of the challenges in, in um, containing the COVID-19 virus has been the myths and rumors that um, continue to circulate about COVID-19. COVID-19 is new. And so as, the, as a pandemic was spreading worldwide, the science community was also learning new things all the time. So we thought we knew something, and then a month later we knew more, and that created a lot of confusion. One of the other other um, pieces playing into a lot of the myths around COVID-19 and vaccination and other prevention efforts um, is the rise in social media, um, the access that people have and the blurred lines between um, what is fact and what is opinion. And um, some of the myths around COVID-19 in tribal communities that um, hamper efforts to reduce the number of people exposed to COVID-19 include that the COVID-19 will alter a person's DNA, 
In fact, the COVID vaccine is an mRNA vaccine that delivers instructions to cells to start protecting the cell against the virus. It doesn't ever enter the cell's nucleus where the DNA is stored. Um, one of the other myths or one of the trust issues that um, Diana and Ryan had spoken about earlier in our presentation, I don't trust the government. They've used biological and medical agents and acts of genocide against us throughout history. The government did not create the COVID-19 vaccine. It was an effort worldwide by independent pharma pharmaceutical companies to race to find um, a way to prevent more deaths and severe illness. Another um, pervasive myth is that COVID, the COVID-19 vaccine will cause infertility. Studies have found no changes in pregnancy success rates or sperm health in vaccinated individuals. And in fact, there have been many cases in which um, a pregnant woman has either had uh, a miscarriage or a preterm birth, an unplanned preterm birth, um, because they developed COVID and developing the COVID um, virus during pregnancy puts both mom and baby at risk. Um, I talked a little bit about this, um, getting the COVID-19 vaccine while I'm pregnant or nursing will hurt my baby. Um, developing COVID-19 while pregnant increases the chances of having a premature birth. Vaccination during pregnancy or while nursing passes on the antibodies to babies, strengthening their immune systems. Another myth is, is that once you've had COVID-19, you develop immunity to it. One of the things with COVID-19 is, is that it's mutating rather rapidly. So there are various strains. Also, not everyone who's had COVID actually develops an immunity to it. So persons who have had COVID-19 and have not been vaccinated are actually twice as likely to be reinfected by COVID than people who have had COVID and are vaccinated. Um, so, what are we doing about the vaccination hesitancy barriers uh, within our tribal nations here in North Dakota? Well, our center has collaborated with the Center for Immunization Research and Education housed within North Dakota State University to work with Indigenous nations of North Dakota and urban Indigenous populations in North Dakota to create tribal specific vaccination education campaigns and also develop resources to promote the COVID-19 vaccine and other vaccines in tribal communities. Um, we're hoping to provide vaccination education, information on potential booster shots and address community vaccination and hesitancy barriers. Um, so one of the main uh, one of the things that we're doing with this project is to identify community advocates within our tribal nations in North Dakota and within our tribal urban Indian areas, such as Fargo, Grand Forks, Minot, and Bismarck. And these community advocates are really going to help us focus our COVID-19 vaccination efforts for our Indigenous communities. We are also going to be conducting vaccination assessments. So we are hoping to conduct tribal vaccination assessments within uh, with our community advocates to identify barriers and strategies to address COVID-19 um, vaccination efforts in our indigenous communities and within our urban um, Indian population. Uh, and then through that assessment, we are hoping to um, collaborate with the tribes to develop educational campaigns and a toolkit that will be used um, for communities to help spread the message. Um, and each of those campaigns will be uh, 
specific to each indigenous community. All of our tribes within North Dakota are, are different and they're all at different stages in addressing COVID-19 um, with vaccination efforts and within their communities. We are also hoping to work with tribes to provide funding to address vaccination rates. Uh, we have sub awards that are available to tribal nations um, based on the strategies and activities they identify to address um, vaccination hesitancies and barriers. And uh, the funding will each be specific to the tribal, the tribe's individual priorities and needs. So the outcomes of this project are hopefully to identify the problem with vaccination issues within our communities. We're hoping to assess our um, coverage rates um, by reviewing NDIS data reports, and we are hoping to identify and develop culturally appropriate interve interventions that lead to increased vaccination uptake. With that, is there any questions uh, regarding our presentation or comments from anyone in the in the group? Please feel free to unmute or I'm not sure where the chat is. <laughs> you can use the Q and A option, which should be in the lower right hand corner. Okay. Well, if I don't have any questions, we have more slides. <laughs> Ryan, would you like to talk about? Yeah, so on another note, we are hosting our sixth annual tribal maternal and child health symposium. It will be November 9th and 10th, and it will be held um, at the, uh, the MA, hosted by MHA Nation in Newtown, North Dakota. Um, the theme for this year's uh, symposium is ensuring our children's future um, and it's the INSURING uh, because we really want to focus on Medicaid for our indigenous youth. Um, so the agenda is still being um, finalized, but we are going to have potentially a keynote address from the North Dakota Medicaid director, uh, which will lead into a Medicaid panel by tribal benefits coordinators from all of the tribes in North Dakota. Uh, we'll also have panels on resiliency um, from mothers, uh, fathers, and youth um, from indigenous communities. We'll have presentations on adverse childhood experiences, how that those ACEs affect babies in utero. Uh, we will do be having um, a presentation from a Indigenous dentist on uh, children's Indigenous children's oral health. Um, we will also be talking about education in North Dakota and how the state of education affects our Indigenous youth's health as well. Um, the state of North Dakota Department of Health will be presenting. Um, each each tribe has a liaison with the North Dakota Department of Health. Those tribal liaisons will be presenting as well. There will be a fatherhood panel talking about indigenous um, parenthood from a father's perspective and how important it is to include fathers within discussions on MCH. Uh, we will be, there will be a presentation on children's mental health and resiliency. Um, and then we will be doing some action planning with our center will be doing some action planning with um, the participants in a res cafe style um, activity. So if you have any questions on the tribal MCH symposium, please put it in the chat or let us know. Uh, we can also send you this flyer. The QR code um, on the flyer is right to the registration. There's no cost to register. 
Um, it's a free symposium. Uh, and if you have any questions, like I said, please let us know. Thank you. Okay, there was one question. What are the efforts being made? What are the efforts being made to get the vaccine out to remote tribal locations? I can, I yes, can take that, that question. Um, so there are a variety of different efforts. Um, I can only speak to North Dakota. In North Dakota, all of the tribal nations um, were uh, provided access to the vaccine either through Indian Health Services or through the State Department of Health. And the number of, um, of, of the population of the tribal nations um, dictated um, what access to those vaccines would be as the vaccine became available and based on priorities. And um, half of the tribes are working with Indian Health Services and the other half are working with the North Dakota Department of Health and vaccines have been available to the tribal nations since the vaccine rolled out many months ago. And they are continuously um, getting new, um, new shipments of the vaccine as more becomes available and more groups of people are available. And um, vaccines have been available through um, like drive through large scale um, vaccine clinics also um, in more intimate, smaller, um, through tribal health, through local public health, through um, providers at Indian Health Services. And in for uh, Indigenous people living in urban areas, um, access has been through um, public health or their primary care medical provider. And if I could add to that just a little bit, um, I know that tribes are working together too um, in their vaccination efforts. Uh, for example, uh, in Sistan, which has a small part of its land base in North Dakota, the Pfizer vaccine was not available because their Indian Health Service clinic did not have the freezers um, that would get cold enough to store it. And so they only had Moderna. And when Pfizer was approved for use in the um, 12 to 17 year olds, um, the Sistan, Wapton tribal members in that age range weren't able to be vaccinated because they didn't have that Pfizer vaccine available. Um, and they worked with um, a tribe in North Dakota. I believe it was MHA Nation who had Pfizer available and had the freezers and they shared their vaccine with us um, and we were able to transport it to Sistan. Um, and it was able to be kept in the freezers we had for about a week and still be viable that way. And so I know that there are tribes that are helping one another and that's another way that they're working. Thank you guys for that. Um, also, if you know of anybody who has delivered a baby during COVID-19, we are working with the childbirth experience um, survey to oversample indigenous populations or just for our region in general. So if you know anybody who has given birth during COVID and is interested in filling out this survey, you can just take a picture of this little QR code in the corner and it should lead you to the survey. And if not, email us and let us know and we can send you the link. This slide lists all of the resources that were utilized in preparing this presentation for you today. Um, all of the um, statistics and information that we provided you were evidence-based and um, you can see the uh, different sources that we utilized. And this is our contact information. So please feel free to reach out to any of us Follow us on Facebook. Um, send us an email if you have any questions you think of, any good ideas. If you want to be a community vaccination advocate, let us know and we'd love to collaborate with you.
and I know we are a little bit early. So is there anything else we'd like to talk about or share or would we like to end early? What do you think panel? Is there anything else we missed? I don't think so. I, um, if there's any questions, um, that any, anyone who is attending has, um, it's nice that we have time to be able to answer that. And if not, I, I've never, ever heard anyone complain about getting some extra time back in their schedule. All right, well, with that, we will go ahead and end our presentation. Thank you guys so much for joining us and.